Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. This is going to be a fun one. I would like to introduce to you Project Zebra 3. Check this out. This is, let's see here, looking at the front vertical lights, this is a 1974 through 1976 Ford Grand Torino. Anybody who has ever seen Starsky and Hutch or knows what Starsky and Hutch is, you'll know immediately what Project Zebra 3 means. For those of you that don't know, the car used in that television series was known as the Striped Tomato, and it was a red, I think it was a 75 Grand Torino, all red with a white stripe that came this way and up and over the rear. This is a hard body, and it's by, I'll, I'll have a picture of it and the name of the company, but it, the way that it comes is horrific. In my opinion, again, it's, it's all subjective, right, looks. But uh, that's not what we're going to do with it. I was able to find this body after many years of searching on eBay for a surprisingly good amount, and I picked it up. Now, the body is not without its flaws. There are some weird proportions here. This scallop isn't deep enough. There's some weird stuff going on with the back bumper. The back bumper does stick out far, but not this far. Uh, the front bumper has a weird slope downward. I'm hoping that maybe I can cut it off and twist it up a little bit. This is actually... It's weirdly not as noticeable as the rear. The front of the car is pretty darn good. Like There's some weird proportion things in here, but it's not that bad. The vinyl half top has to go because the striped tomato doesn't have that. More importantly, it does not have these opera windows. This car doesn't have an inside glass panel. These are actually painted, which means if I cut off this molding here, this black area and this... Well, the rest of the car is the same height and the same is going to be true of all of this molding. So we'll snip that off, very carefully sand it down. There is a small rib right here and then we can spray the car. The lights are already lenses. So this is a separate red lens. We'll have to put a little uh, housing in here for the reverse lights. The headlights are separate lenses. The vertical turn signals a separate lens, which is great. We'll have to make a marker here. These mirrors are far too large. This car should have the sport mirrors. But the big thing that we need to do is plop this on a chassis. I thought about doing a, a ladder chassis with a solid rear axle. I didn't want to deal with it, to be honest. I snagged this TA02 from eBay Japan, and it's in really, really good shape. So let's, you know, it should fit pretty well. I, I test fit it with my TA02. And it is too short. So we're going to have to extend the chassis. Not much. It's looking like maybe 8 millimeters. So it'll it'll fit pretty darn well. I'm not going to use these body mounts to hold the body down. I'm going to use these and these. So they'll screw into something in the front. I'm hoping I can make a couple of posts here as well as at the rear. Just kind of a couple standoffs down there. We're not going to use the stock body mounts. I don't want to put any holes in anything. And because the body will be screwed in place, I want the battery accessible from the bottom side. I'm really happy it came with this upgraded chassis because this is a nice flat surface, which will give me excellent datums to pick off really all the mounting all the mounting points. I can also figure out what all the Z height is by simply measuring from the bottom of this to the top of these plates, really for everywhere on this car. So this will be a pretty easy chassis to make and uh, it'll be a bathtub style at the front and then a reverse bathtub at the battery and all of this will be opened to allow me to install a battery from the bottom side of the car. So first things first, let me design and whip up a chassis and with the beauty of movie magic uh, what takes me about three or four weeks to design and get will take you a split second our new chassis came in from shapeways show you how this works now the main purpose of the chassis 
redesign was because I wanted to access the battery from the underside since the body will never come off. Uh, this isn't so, so easy to do. As you can see that there's the front bulkhead that attaches here, the rear bulkhead that attaches there, and in the middle is this big area that flexes easily. So to remedy that, we have the battery door with these little clips. The door will snap in place couple of body pins to hold the four corners and now it is completely secure because the battery door is uh, structural to this chassis. This also will fit a full-size lithium polymer hard cell pack which is cool not that I I don't even think I own any of those but it's capable of doing that. It also does stretch the wheelbase just a bit I think it's three millimeters maybe it's six and now we can also go ahead and install the rear front-ish and we're not done we've actually also got new front suspension here the purpose to install this is because i want to install the tamiya racing semi truck tires which are a larger tire the tire is the same diameter but it has a much larger sidewall the problem is as you can see from this side the hub and the knuckle are going to hit the rim so we're going to pull that in. I forget how much, maybe it's six millimeters. You can see it here with the new arm. It'll pull it in that much. So first things, maybe we install these first. We've got the hub off the car. We can reuse all the same parts, including the same ball bearings, the same axles. The purpose of this is just to get some more clearance around the hub. Okay, so that'll come out, that comes out. So we'll take the same bearings, drop that way in there. This will drop way in there. Cool, I hope there's proper clearance. I made it really big around the perimeter, so this should clear. I made a little bit of a boo-boo. You can see the original hole there, and the, uh, the one I made larger, because I didn't realize that part of the stub axle actually sits uh, inside that hole. But now we'll push it through. Okay, tragedy averted. Now we can't find the roll pin. We'll just, we'll just put that there temporarily. Put the ball stud right there where it belongs. Arm comes off, new arm goes in. This should all fit perfectly. The only problem that we're gonna have is the upper link needs to be shortened. This one has a turnbuckle, but I've got some links of threaded rod. I think we'll just use that. This also should be in the exact same spot. You can see how the orientation has changed. Instead of being canted backward, it's vertical. So this should attach exactly as it always had. I just realized that on the passenger side, the knuckle's broken. Win-win. That's all put back together. I had to shorten the upper links here. You can see I got rid of basically that gap in the middle. These were turnbuckles, so I just replaced it with a three millimeter threaded rod. And I did space out that ball stud because it was binding. Uh, on this side, I did trim that trans piece right there, but now we're all good to go. With the tire installed, you can see that I can now have a much smaller rim and it will not rub on the hub. This is gonna make the steering geometry a bit more. The further in you have the pivot point, the less travel the tire actually does. Let's say this was directly in the center, the tire would only pivot like this. The further out it goes, the more the tire does this. But to get the look that I want, uh, that's necessary. So I think we need to put the servo in and the steering components. I like to install these ball bearing steering systems here because otherwise they're pretty terrible. Screw all that down. Front end is installed. Now we can throw the back half of the car on. That should be exactly as it was from factory as well. Rear suspension is in, the front suspension is in. Feels, feels pretty good. I'd like to actually hook up the steering, but while I'm here, just because I'm anxious, I want to install the, the rear suspension mount. To do that, I designed it so that I have to incorporate the sway bar. So these two screws will come out and then we will put them straight back in after that's installed and then use these two outer mounts here. 
This is the rear body mount for the Torino body. The front one hasn't come in yet, but I'm sure thanks to Movie Magic, it'll be there in the next scene. In the meantime, I want to see how this looks. So you can see that this here will line up with that, or close enough anyway, that's why it's adjustable. Sweet. Slot mags have been installed, so the rears have, I believe, a two millimeter greater offset than the fronts to account for the wider rear track of the car. I have been driving the car a bit, as you can see, it's a little dusty, just to kind of break it in. The car has been fine. I had one of the steering links come off just because it rattled free. But weirdly, after about 15 or 20 minutes of just slow driving because that's what i've been doing with this car it'll stop um so i don't know if that is an esc thing i mean it, if you shut the car off and turn it back on it's fine again so i'm inclined to believe it's the esc let's move on i want to get rid of this receiver because i'm going to use a sense innovations ess dual sound box and the reason i want to get rid of this is i don't want the throttle as dumb as this sounds i don't want the throttle to control the sound box I'm going to use my Flysky GT5 because what I'm going to do is run the throttle off of channel 5. This way I can just kind of sit there and rev it up when I want to. But for what I'm driving in, I don't want to have that droning sound all the time. So I've done this pretty often. Channel 3 is going to turn on the audible as well as the visual siren. So it'll do two different things there. Let's go ahead and install this real quick. Got the new receiver in here. Let's go ahead and put the battery in. So I do want to show the battery that you can now install in this thing here, which is really cool. I'm going to install a 6,000 milliamp lithium polymer battery, which will go just like that. When the body is on, I just plug it in first and then just fish the power cable through. Plug this in, turn the radio on, we'll have to set up a new profile. We'll turn the car on. All right. I'm using this siren as an example because this is not the one that I'll be using later. Plug these three in and then plug in channel three as well. We'll have to power the main unit. Actually, the power is not from this. The power is from uh, this. And then we'll just put this in line. Not a massive fan about how these get the power, but plenty of room in this car for all this stuff. Okay. So now, in theory, I, I am doing this the first time with everybody here. So let's just see if this works. If we press channel three. Oh, that's what I'm forgetting. So this is going to get kind of messy. We want the sound box plugged directly in. However, we do not want the light plugged in because if we do, the minute we plug it in, it's on. So in theory, and I'm sure there's electrical engineers watching what I'm about to do, thinking that I'm a crazy man. I, I, I am. So in theory, we plug in the remote switch here. God, this is... I, there's never a build that I have that doesn't have a million wires. We plug in the remote switch here. We're going to plug in the negative and positive because that's all we should need here. And I'm just going to unplug that for the time being. Plug this straight in. Okay, so that's off. And if we hit channel three, one more time. Cool. The problem is you have to reset the car when you turn it on or off because after that it goes into a variety of different modes like pulse and all this other nonsense but that's cool that that works so now if we plug in the sound box in theory we turn the light on and the siren should go on i've plugged in the sound controller into channel five so if we rev up the channel five now let's see if this works <laughs> Now, if I put it back down to zero, the car, the sound should shut off after a few seconds. Needless to say, there it goes. This is exactly what I want, so that when I'm driving it, usually it's quiet. Let's turn on our siren. <laughs> Sweet. Once more, should kill it. Oh, come on. This remote switch is not very good. Let's try it again here. Let's power this on. And 
press and hold again. I wish it... It's just, it's just not very re reliable. Now I can try and mount to this somehow. I'm just gonna use double-sided tape. These come with really cool mounting features for a lot of Axial and uh, the TRX4. It's not really gonna work for this application. Perhaps I can later. Oh, you know what I could do? I could maybe mount it to the rear, but there's probably not enough clearance. We'll just stick it in the middle because there's nothing in there. The body posts that come down in the center of the body, which I'm not using at the moment, were interfering with the sound box. So I just rotated it 90, scooted the ESC up just a hair. It's pretty close to that uh, bell crank, but that's all right. It fits. And now we can plop the body on. Thank you. 